Hi everyone, my name is Joel Johnson and I'm the conservation garden farmer here at the Native Seed Search Conservation Center. Native Seed Search is a nonprofit seed bank that focuses on preserving and conserving over 1900 varieties of desert adapted crop species. Each season at the Conservation Center we're growing out anywhere from 25 to 30 of those varieties and we rely on a network of partner farmers throughout the Southwest to help us increase the rest. Our focus at the Conservation Center is the first regeneration grow out from a seed packet sample in the seed bank to a larger increase sample, which then we can share with those growers. And we rely on them to help us get the increase amounts, which we share through our distribution programs and what you'll find available through the seed catalog or online. We want to take a few minutes and just give you a virtual tour of our space here in Tucson. Whether you're new to Native Seed Search or maybe you just haven't been out to the Conservation Center before, um, we're going to take you around, show you a little bit of what we do here. Hope you enjoy this tour and please reach out to us with any questions so we can get you more connected. We're right here at the entrance to our grow out property and we've got some cuttings of heritage fruit trees from Mission Garden. These are Mexican sweet lime and we've got some Quito Paquito fig and pomegranate. And we're going to use this as both a, a break and some habitat for our plantings, but also just a, a shaded and beautiful space to welcome visitors. So maybe next time you come, these plants will be a little more established and we'll gather here in the orchard before we head into the rest of the property to do some work. All throughout our property, we have areas like this that are dedicated to pollination plantings. These surround our grow out beds and allow us to encourage pollinators throughout the year so that we can have the strong and vigorous pollination that we need to set really healthy seed crops. This is Arizona milkweed, which we got in partnership with our friends over at Borderlands Restoration Network. And all throughout our property as we continue to develop it, We'll be investing in native plant habitat, trees for shade and windbreak, and pollination plants so that we can encourage beneficial insects, create habitat for native animals, and create just a, a good balance for our farm ecosystem. A lot of our plantings are in shallow basin beds like this one next to me. And what this lets us do is use drip tape to really gently and slowly water deep for the plant roots to go down into the soil. The temptation with drip tape is to water really shallowly so that all the water's in the top few inches and the roots are shallow as well. But what we're trying to shift to is using the drip tape to water really slowly, really deep, and to water less frequently. That way with our mulch, we lock that water into the soil reserve and the roots have to go down and find it, which builds strong and vigorous plants and allows us to use our water resources really efficiently. You'll notice isolation tents like these behind me throughout our property. When we grow multiple crop varieties of the same type, we'll occasionally put some into an isolation tent like this. For self-pollinating crops like beans, this allows us to prevent pollinators from making a cross between two varieties that are planted near each other. And for other cross-pollinating crops, we can limit or introduce pollinators to only the crop that we want to. Across all of our plantings, we want to build and increase the fertility of our soil in-house, which means that at the end of every season, we're trying to preserve and incorporate as much of the plant material back into the soil as possible. So when we finish harvesting sunflowers or corn or sorghum, all those stalks are, are dried on site, shredded, and then returned to those beds as mulch. So the only nutrients going out the door are the seeds themselves, which minimizes how much we need to replenish and replace each season. One of the challenges of planting in the desert is that nutrients can become locked up and immobilized in our highly alkaline soil. So one of the ways we're trying to work around this is by producing highly fungal compost that can mobilize and make more of these nutrients available to desert plants. Next to me is a Johnson Sioux composting bioreactor, which is a really slow year long process to produce a highly fungal compost. We're about halfway through this process and this material has already broken down by about 50%. So in March, we'll harvest this and we'll use this as a soil inoculant, a way to coat our seeds and introduce beneficial fungi that can increase and promote growth. This is our newest expansion bed. 
We broke ground out here last December and we spent most of the first year just conditioning the soil with compost and cover crops. At monsoon season, we planted this with what you see here, an interplanting of tepary beans, corn, and sunflowers. And this is kind of a neat example of how you can get multiple benefits by combining different plantings. So the beans are not only fixing nitrogen, but they're also mulching that corn, lowering the temperature on its roots and conserving water within that planting. So we'll get four yields from a single plot and we'll do it in a way that'll benefit each plant in different ways. In a number of places throughout the site, we're using silage tarps like these to solarize out Bermuda grass and other noxious weeds and prepare garden beds for planting or development. As you can imagine, there's a lot of work to do around here and we are always welcoming new hands. So if you're in the Tucson area and you want to get your hands dirty in the grow out gardens, check out our website for volunteer opportunities and how you can get started in the seed lab or the gardens. And wherever you are, there's lots of resources so that you can learn about seed saving or desert farming online and you can support us anywhere, anytime.